Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a strong earthquake in the water, that causes a fissure in the ocean's bottom. On the surface, there is a cute couple having fun. The man tells the woman to close her eyes. He then puts a ring in her hand and asks her to marry him, but he is pulled underwater before he gets an answer. The woman is confused and wonders where he ended up, until his body rises to the surface. She starts screaming for help, but no one hears her. No one comes except this blue zombie, who eventually kills her. Then we see Hunter Ray and Jada. While fishing, they notice another boat catching fire from fireworks in the distance. They approach them, and Hunter helps them put out the fire, after which he confiscates the fireworks, since he is a supervisor of this area. They get back into the boat and go back to fishing, and Ray catches something on the end of his line. An all-blue corpse, just like the zombie we saw at the beginning. Using an underwater camera, Jada finds a blue light coming from the seabed. This is very bizarre, and Hunter goes to call the authorities. They then cover the blue corpse, but the latter turned out to be still alive. The zombie attacks Jada and lethally wounds her in the shoulder. Hunter stabs the zombie with a machete, and everyone goes to Jada to help her. To prevent the zombie from waking up, they throw him into the sea before he bites someone else. Meanwhile, Hunter's wife Kenzie and their daughter Sam are in town. Hunter calls his wife to ask her to help with Jada, since she is a doctor. Kenzie tells Sam to go home, and immediately goes to her husband. The woman and other doctors check on Jada and send her to the hospital. Ray goes to the hospital to accompany Jada, while Hunter decides to stay to find out what happened in the ocean. Next, we meet a new character, the sheriff, who wants to follow Hunter to the place where all the tragedy began. They go to investigate and see a blue light in the ocean water. Hunter throws Jada's camera into the water, to find out where this mysterious blue light came from. They find a wreck and crack where the blue light comes from. Farther on, they notice another zombie swimming around. Hunter tells them that he injured a zombie, but he survived anyway. The sheriff laughs as he does not believe his story. Just then however, a large group of zombies come out of the water and start heading towards them. The sheriff realizes that this is no joke, and immediately radios for help, telling them to evacuate everyone and informing them of the outbreak. As they try to evacuate everyone from the beach, the tsunami siren begins to sound. The people still there notice that the ocean water is moving backwards, because a giant wave full of zombies is coming. Meanwhile, underwater, an endless stream of zombies swim relentlessly toward the shore. Hunter and the sheriff try to approach the shore, but they notice that the big wave is about to hit them and lock them inside the boat. There are still people on the beach when the wave reaches the shore, and fortunately, many of them manage to survive, like this couple. The tsunami acts as a cab for the zombies, who start wandering around the beach. Hunter and the sheriff are surrounded by zombies on all sides. In the meantime, Kenzie quarantines Ray and Jada, as they still do not know what precisely it is. On the beach, zombies start attacking people and turning them into zombies. Samantha, Hunter's daughter is with her friends, and they encounter zombies attacking people. The girl is unable to contact her father, after which she runs away with her friends. While on the beach, Hunter and the sheriff try to save the people. Unfortunately, bullets are not enough to kill them completely, but only slow them down. At the hospital, Jada turns into a zombie. She turns and attacks Ray, and bites a doctor. Ray immediately runs away from there. On the beach, Hunter and the sheriff realize that people who have been attacked are now turning into those monsters. The sheriff wants to call for reinforcements, and they escape from there. When they get into the car, they find a couple hiding in the back of the car. The men agree to help them. While at the hospital, Kenzie goes to check on Jada, and discovers that all the medical staff has been bitten and turned. Jada suddenly starts chasing her, and Kenzie tries to escape. Fortunately, Ray comes out of the room and rescues her. Kenzie says it is an infection, and Ray tells her about the zombies that were in the water, and how they arrived on the beach thanks to the tsunami. The group in the car reaches the police station, but a wave of zombies is heading toward them, so they rush inside. The guy, Blaine, and his girlfriend are cornered, and he throws his girlfriend to the zombies to save himself. The poor girl gets infected, and the others run in. Inside, Blaine grabs the other policeman's gun, and threatens to shoot. Finally, Blaine shoots the policeman with the gun and kills him, but Hunter knocks him out. After that, they tie him up and lock him in a cell. Sam and her friends are running away from a group of zombies, and end up in a supermarket. Unfortunately, the place is full of zombies, and the group tries to go unnoticed. One of the guys trips and sprains his ankle. Soon after, the zombies catch up to him and attack him. One girl fights them, but there are too many of them, and they have to escape from there. In this way however, they get split up. At the police station, 
The sheriff tries to radio for help, but no one answers. Meanwhile, Hunter does an internet search, and finds information about the ship they saw at the bottom of the sea. A report states that the ship is in a dumpster. Nevertheless, they had seen it in the sea. They realize there is something underneath, but they don't know what yet. As the zombies try to get inside, they have to escape from there. They take some weapons from the police station, and leave Blaine behind, chained to a bench. When they get outside, they find an immense number of zombies. Rifles would not be enough to take them down, so Hunter uses a bazooka to finish them off. They subsequently get into a car and drive away. On the way, they spot the alpha zombie and drive over him, but the monster does not die. Sam and her friend continue to run, and reach the van of one of their drummer friends. They hide in the van, but the drummer jumps out and starts fighting zombies with drumsticks. The heroism costs him his life. The sheriff's daughter runs through the forest and reaches a house on the hill. The owner of the house asks her to turn around to confirm that she is not infected, after which she enters his property. The house has a large fence surrounding the property, so zombies cannot enter. The girl is safe, but when she goes inside, she realizes that the man is hiding something in the basement, a zombie he is experimenting on. The man Marty gives the girl a phone, and she tries to communicate with her father. While at the station, Blaine frees himself and prepares to escape, but encounters his girlfriend, who he had thrown to the zombies. So, she jumps on him and attacks him. Back, Sam and her friend try to start the van to escape, but it does not start. Now they are trapped in a van surrounded by zombies, and in addition, he has a leg injury and will not be able to run. So, the girl decides to sacrifice herself, so that Sam can escape. He climbs onto the roof of the car, and starts playing his ukulele. Just then, Hunter and the sheriff arrive in the car to rescue them. As soon as she sees her father, Sam runs toward him, while the sheriff shoots the zombies. He tries to save the boy with the ukulele, but the zombies catch up to him. Afterwards, the group gets into the car and heads to the hospital, to pick up Ray and Kenzie, Sam's mother. Once there, they go inside, and Sam finds a phone to call his mother. Meanwhile, the other part of the group fights zombies inside the hospital. Hunter grabs some electrical wires and kills some zombies. The electricity passes from one zombie to another, killing them all. Soon after, Sam finds her mother again, and they embrace happily. They all quickly get into the car, and head to another shelter. They reach Marty's house, and the sheriff finally sees his daughter. They all go inside, and the sheriff grabs the radio to contact another police station, to call for backup. The zombie in the basement breaks free from its chains, and makes a loud noise. The sheriff goes to check on his own without telling anyone. Shortly afterwards, he is bitten, and the zombie wanders upstairs, where he starts fighting Kenzie. Marty arrives just in time and kills the zombie with a taser. He reveals that electricity is the best way to kill them, as they are water zombies. At that point, they decide to lower all the zombies into the water, to eliminate them with electric shocks, and explode the wreckage with C4. The zombies are approaching the house, and Hunter connects the taser with his machete. He goes outside to take them down, but the taser stops working. Kenzie follows him outside and turns on the wood chipper. They subsequently throw each zombie one by one into the machine, chopping them to pieces. After eliminating the zombies outside the house, the group leaves. They set out with all the tools they need to kill the zombies, once and for all. On the way, the sheriff feels sick. The bite on his arm is taking effect, and he is about to transform. The sheriff tells Hunter to save the town, and not to make his mistakes. Hunter does not understand what mistakes he is talking about, and the sheriff reveals the truth. 30 years ago, a pharmaceutical company secretly tested on people. The company gave them a lot of money to turn a blind eye. In the end, the experiment failed, because the substance was not yet ready, and many people suffered. To cover it up, the drug company locked all the infected people in a ship and sank them. Then Kenzie reveals that this was actually the experiment's goal which was to infect everyone with this virus. As they talk, more zombies come and start attacking them. One part stays to fight against the zombies, while the others escape. The sheriff gets sicker and sicker, and his daughter lays him down and gives him a grenade. As soon as the sheriff turns into a zombie, he throws the grenade and blows up. The people still alive are divided into two groups. Ray Marty and Tahana head to the wreckage to blow it up. Meanwhile, Hunter Kenzie and Samantha's task is to lure the zombies, and kill them into the water. The second group goes to a pond and throws electrical cables inside. Hunter then takes a vehicle, and plays loud music to lure the zombies to the pond. Meanwhile, in the other group, Marty jumps into the water to go plant the C4, but he is surrounded by zombies and dies. In the process, Hunter's vehicle gets stuck in the sand, 
and the alpha zombie approaches him. Later, Kenzie pulls the vehicle out of the sand and takes it to the pond. The zombies follow her and enter the water. Hunter manages to overpower the zombie for a moment, and tells Sam to flip the switch, but the handle is stuck. The other group is no better off, as their boat gets stuck in the middle of the ocean, and is quickly overpowered by the zombies. Ray orders the girl to escape from there, while he stays to distract the zombies. The girl jumps into the water while he stays behind. On the other side, the alpha zombie recovers, but this time Hunter smashes his face with his machete. Sam finally turns the handle, and all the zombies in the pond die. Elsewhere, Ray ties the C4 to the anchor and throws it toward the shipwreck. Once the anchor reaches the bottom, Ray detonates the C4, blowing himself and destroying the shipwreck. The explosion causes a final total wave, but this one is zombie-free. Our four survivors are safe. We see that it is all over now, all the zombies are dead, and even the sheriff's daughter has managed to survive. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.